If you've ever thought about moving to a different location, a different place, no matter if it's a street away, a city away, a nation away, a world away, one of the questions that you've been asked is, why did you do it? Why did you choose the place that you're moving? It might be to a new neighborhood. It might be to a new country, but that is the number one question that you're going to get asked no matter where you move in the world. So for those of you who are looking to move to, let's say Mexico, or especially the state of Yucatan and Meta to Mexico, this might be a video for you because I'm going to discuss the reasons that my wife and I ended up building a home in Meta to Mexico. And well, I hope you enjoy and let's roll the intro. Now, first things first, my name is Alexander Howell, and this channel is dedicated to talking about real estate, travel, international real estate, all kinds of different things, but it is really centrally focused around our experience building a home in Medellin, New Mexico, and just that city in general. Now, I've made videos talking about Portugal, about my home state, about all kinds of different things, but for the most part, that's pretty much the reason that people come to this channel, and we've grown a pretty good following on here so far. And if you want to be a part of that following, please feel free to like this video and subscribe subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. That'll let you know anytime that I go live or one of these videos premieres. And I always try to be there when these videos premiere. Now, on top of that, I have all of my social links down below. Instagram is normally where you can find me. But if you have a question about something related to this video or one of the hundreds of others that I have on this channel, always feel free to text me at 816-727-7740 or send me an email, alexander at alexanderhow.com. Alexanderhow.com is obviously my website. I've got some free resources on there. And if you want to know how to get them free, join our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash travel, the number two, Medida. So travel, the number two, Medida, and uh, that's where you can find me. But let's get to the crux of this video. So the reasons are many, but the reason that we initially found this wonderful city was we were actually looking to do a sabbatical, basically take some time off a, a more extended period of time than we've ever taken before. And we did that because we figured our kid was going to go into kindergarten the next year. Obviously the pandemic happened and we ended up holding him off for a year. He was kind of on the edge anyway, but we held him off for a year. But at the time we didn't know that we were going to do that. So we decided let's find a place in the world to make this happen. Now we looked everywhere. We looked to Europe. We looked to, I think we even might've looked to Thailand at one point because one of our friends had just been there and thought it was awesome. But for the most part, we were staying in the Western hemisphere. So it was going to be Mexico. Mexico, Costa Rica, Belize. We even looked at uh, Medellin, Colombia, and that place looks absolutely amazing. Not quite like the Narcos that you remember. But we looked all over the place and randomly one night, my wife and I were sitting there and she found this really cool city called Merida. And we went, okay, that looks amazing. We looked at the rental rates, stuff like that. Everything just kind of fell in line. We didn't stay in the actual city at the time. We stayed in a beach town or a beach uh, principality, if you will, called Waimatoon and found a great beachside place. It was wonderful, beautiful. But the number one thing that we didn't anticipate, but that made it so much easier was that we were so close to family. So we actually had family down almost the entire trip, which was absolutely amazing. Now there are all kinds of reasons to look at Medida specifically, but as far as the state of Yucatan and Mexico in general, that brings us to our first thing. And that is the distance to our original location. Now we are located in Kansas City, Missouri, and Medida has an international airport, same as we do. And if there was a direct flight, which there is not currently, hopefully I can lobby for that at some point, but if there was a direct flight or I was ever able to win the lottery and get a private flight, it would be three hours at the most to get from Kansas City International to Medida's International Airport. But that being said, the normal way that we fly is utilizing United. And that flight is two hours to Houston, two hours to Medida from there, especially on the way back. It makes it really nice because they have a really, really positive, very simple streamlined process to go through customs. Like I have to say that uh, Medida can take some time to get through customs and you just have to kind of understand that. But Houston, they get you through real fast. So, so one of the biggest things is we are very close to our original location here in Kansas City. And that just benefits us because family, friends, whoever it might be, can come down and it's not traveling for 16 hours overseas to come see us in the Philippines and Thailand and Japan. We're right there. We're a neighbor country and it's awesome. So number two hits a little close to home because we had originally planned on building on an island called Isla Mujeres, which is right off the coast of Cancun. We loved it. We actually looked at lots and we were planning on just trying to figure it out, but we were 
quite a bit younger at the time that we were looking at it. This is pre-kids. We were doing okay, but not as well as we are now. And because of that, we weren't able to really pull the trigger. Isla Mujeres prices skyrocketed, but that actually ended up working out well for us because as much as it would have been amazing to live there, one of the biggest positives about Merida, Mexico is the fact that you have convenience relative to a beach town or to an island. Living on Cozumel might be amazing. Living on Isla Mujeres, I'm sure, is amazing. It was a dream of ours. But at the same time, there's something to be said for having, and this is going to sound bad, but it's nice to have a Walmart. It's nice to have a Costco. It's nice to have a Sam's Club. Like, it sounds ridiculous. Like, this is total gringo logic. But as far as being an expat, as far as being a snowbird, as far as being somebody who is going back and forth at this point and is looking towards the future, it is nice to have some of the most modern conveniences that you can possibly have. And also, go to Calle 59 and see all of the electronic stores and know that you can pick up anything there as well. But having those little shops is fantastic, but having those big box stores, as annoying as it can possibly be for most people, I have to admit, it is nice going to Walmart and knowing that that's the place where you can get almost everything. Ringo, I know, but it's true. Now on top of that, it's also nice to be able to use things like Uber and Rappi, Rappi, R-A-P-P-I. -P -P I've actually done a video on that, which I'll put right here, one of those two sides. But um, Uber, obviously everybody knows what Uber is, but it's nice to be able to have a bunch of cars right next to you because you are in a city of about a million people. And Rappi is an app where you can basically get almost anything delivered. So Walmart, I think is a little bit different, but you can get pretty much anything delivered from restaurants to drug stores you can get drinks delivered I, I actually my nintendo switch my kids were playing my nintendo switch and one of them broke the controllers i ordered new controllers and they were there within an hour rappy is an amazing app watch the video it's really cool but because you're in a big city you have that convenience. I assume it's the same if you're in Cancun proper. I assume it's the same if you're in Mexico City, Tijuana. I don't know what you can get in Tijuana, but we'll just leave it at that. But anyway, sorry, bad joke. But living in Merida, it's nice to be able to say that you can just plug in your location. It's all GPS certified and you have that Uber app. You have the Rappi app and it's very convenient. And living in a large city, it's very helpful. I live in a suburb of Kansas City. Kansas City is literally we border it, we're in a suburb here, but even just this side, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But if I'm in downtown Kansas City, I have access to everything. That's what it's like in Merida. So convenience is a very positive thing. Now, this next thing that I want to talk about is a little bit different because I always feel a little strange about speaking about it because, and if you follow me on TikTok, which again, uh, all of my social media is Alexander from KC, like Kansas City, so Ale at Alexander from KC, but uh, I started posting some of my YouTube shorts on TikTok as well, and that is that is a tough platform. There are some negative people on there, man. But um, one of the, the terms that I keep hearing is colonizer. And that makes me really sad because that's not how I feel at all. And anybody who's watched these videos probably understands that that's not me at all. But it's something that I get called. But cost of living is part of the reason that people say that. And there is no question that when you are down there, one of the biggest benefits to living down there full time, snowbird, whatever it might be, even just down there for a vacation, is that things are very cheap. I mean, I think we one day bought a whole chicken and all of the stuff that you need for the chicken. So tortilla cilantro, onions, like all the stuff. And I, it was less than $10. I think it might've been less than $8, but it was like a meal for four people. And we got it for a very little amount of money. It was absolutely amazing. But cost of living is a definite benefit, but that doesn't just extend to food or entertainment. That also extends to real estate, to taxes. You can buy a house like ours that we had built for, I've said it in other videos basically, but around half a million dollars, which ours is out of this world. Like you don't need the space that we have. You can buy a very good house for a hundred thousand dollars that would cost three, four, five times as much up here. Ours would cost a million plus. But it's not just that, it's the fact that there are so many things that are more affordable. And when you get down there, healthcare can be, depending on your situation, there are a lot of caveats. There are other people that have done much better videos than I could ever do about those things. And I encourage you to look them up. But as far as like trying to be a digital nomad, retiring, your dollar will extend further in Medio Mexico. But what I always try to tell people is, if you're going to take advantage of that in the sense that you are moving down there to have a 
better lifestyle than you might be able to have in the United States and Canada and the UK, wherever you might be from, always make sure that you understand that you're investing in the community and that you move down there for the right reason. You move down there because you like the place, because you enjoy the people, the culture, and all of those things. But you put the time and effort into moving down there to doing all of these things, and you're taking advantage of the fact that the cost of living is less, but make sure that you reinvest in your community. Make sure that if there's a place down the street that is open, a small scale place, I told you about Walmart and it is very convenient, but also make sure that you're a part of the community as much as you possibly can be. The Chenbeck Market is just down the street from our home. We try to get all of our fruits and vegetables there. We try to get our flowers there. We try to get everything that we possibly can there. We try to look at the restaurants that are right around us. We fell in love with the city because it is that city. We didn't fall in love with the city because of what we might bring to it. The only thing that I want to be able to bring to it is positivity, knowledge, and understanding that this is a cool place and we're going to try to continue to be a part of the community and do everything that we possibly can. But the fact of the matter still remains. The taxes are low. The housing prices, while you can spend a crazy amount of money, you can spend millions of dollars buying a hacienda and fixing that entire place up along with the property. You can also have a condo rent a house, do all kinds of things. You can stay very lean and it won't hit your pocketbook very hard. Now, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the weather. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because most of the time when you look at Medida, you'll recognize that it is incredibly, incredibly hot and humid. And a lot of people don't like that. But in all honesty, when it comes to me, it doesn't take much for me to adjust. It's normally between a week to a week and a half for me to actually adjust. You just kind of get used to sweating, but it is very hot. But for me, the weather is fantastic. I am currently in Kansas City, and at the time of recording, it is negative five degrees outside with snow. And snow is pretty, and it can be fun. And if you like to ski, I get it. But we're in Kansas City. It's not exactly a mountainous region, and it has a wind chill of negative 23 outside, and the actual temperature is negative five. I don't want to live in a place that hurts my face, and I would much rather sweat than have to put on five billion layers of clothes to be able to walk outside. So that's what I'm going to say about the weather. If you're okay with hot and humid, this is the place for you. If that's just a little too much, you get a little too, you know, it's too much. Eh, maybe look at a different place in Mexico. But as far as Medellin and the Yucatan are concerned, if you like hot, you found the right place. Now this is one that I hear constantly, and that is that it is close to the coast, but it's not on the coast. And the but it's not on the coast is the Alexander Howell version of the it's close conversation. Because while I love the fact that this city is incredibly close to the Gulf of Mexico, so you have a Gulf, a quote unquote ocean, that kind of thing, whatever you want to call it. But when you're that close to an ocean, it's nice to be able to go out, go to the beach, have a beach day, you get the wind on your face, the salt water, and it's fun. It's also next to the largest pier in the world in Progreso, but there are several towns and townships along that road that is the northern part of Yucatan. So you can go to Sisal, you can go to uh, Chelem, you can go to Progreso, obviously, Waimatun where we stayed, Telchac Puerto, there's all kinds of different places, but you are only half an hour to the beach. Now from our house, if you try to like go along the roads and everything, it could take like 40, 45 minutes, but you can also just hop on an ADO bus, which takes about five dollars and they will take you to their station which is right by the pier which is right by the beach in progresso and you're there so it's a really convenient option if you want to be close to the coast without actually living on the coast and for those of you who know about living on the coast you probably know that the salt water and sand coming off of the ocean creates something that peels paint that dry rots wood and that really kind of kills a lot of your fixtures like it'll rust your fixtures a lot so the maintenance can be ludicrously expensive if you actually take care of your home when it's on the beach if you live in Merida you're 30 minutes from the beach and you don't have to deal with all of that salt water directly hitting all of your stuff. So all of your appliances last just as long as they would anywhere else in the world. So close to the beach, but not on the beach. Positive thing. And last, I tried to make this one a little bit longer only because I wanted to really hit each and every one of them. But I just decided to say the overall feel and kind of tell you what I feel from the heart. The people, the the food, the culture, the history of Medida is absolutely amazing. And on this channel, I talk about a lot of those things on a fairly consistent basis. But the architecture, to walk around and see some of the historic buildings, to see some of the historic structures, to see the parks, to see what is gonna be Parque La Plancha in Merida, which looks to be absolutely beautiful and continues to look more and more amazing as it goes on, which is gonna kind of be a, a 
very small central park of Medio Mexico. But all of the architecture, the the, sit, the city itself is just beautiful. Now, there are some abandoned buildings. You'll see that the sidewalks are definitely not the best you'll ever have in the world. And I've said that on a lot of different videos that they're not. But as far as the overall feel of the city, it is absolutely amazing. And one of the reasons that I discussed in the beginning of this video that we actually found Merida was the fact that it is one of the safest cities, not just in Mexico, but in North America. CEO World Magazine said it was the number two safest city in North America. Now, when I put that on TikTok, everybody calls me bad names. When I put it on YouTube shorts, they do the same thing. But at the same time, that's one of the reasons that people find Merida is because they see a place that is safe in Mexico. They see a place that has beautiful architecture, it has beautiful culture, it has an amazing history, and it is very different from most places in Mexico. You're not talking about a tourist center like Cancun or Puerto Vallarta. You're not talking about an expat hub like uh, San Miguel de Allende. You're not talking about a major city like Mexico City. You're talking about a city that has all of the modern conveniences as well as the culture, history, beautiful architecture, food. Oh my God, I can't even get into that. But all of those benefits along with being close to the ocean and very affordable and also has an international airport to get there. This city, is one that people get mad at me for talking about because they want to keep it a secret. It's not going to be a secret forever because it is that beautiful. It is that amazing. And I think people are just going to continue to discover it as time goes on. But that's why we chose it. All of those reasons and probably more that I didn't put on the outline for this video. But if you did enjoy this video, by the way, please feel free again to like it. You're still here. So liking is super easy and I appreciate it. And it's free. What's also free is subscribing to this channel and hitting that notification bell because that will let you know anytime that one of these videos goes live or I go live and live stream and talk to you guys. And you can ask me any questions that you could possibly figure out. You can also do that on the Facebook group that I mentioned before, facebook.com slash group slash travel, the number two Merida, as well as all of my social media at Alexander from KC. You can find me, like I've mentioned a couple of times on TikTok. Instagram is kind of my main thing, although I've been a little silent on there for a bit, uh, only because it's winter and I don't want to take a picture of the snow and be that guy. So that's one of the reasons, but you can find me on there on Twitter, Twitch, all kinds of different social platforms, but at Alexander from KC. That's where I am. If you do have a direct question that's just a short one-off kind of thing, feel free to send me a message at 816-727-7740. Just a simple text is easy. And then uh, email me at alexander at alexanderhow.com. My website is alexanderhow.com. And if you join the Facebook group and then go to that website, you'll be able to get some of the uh, materials that I'm building up in that website for free as well. So thank you all so much for being a part of this. I hope you guys have it. And if you're still here, what's the reason that you looked or found the city that you wanted to be in? Was it, you know, the food? Was it the culture? Was it the convenience? What was it? Comment that down below. Let me know how you feel about it. Give this thing a like. And um, as always, peace.